All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the GN Drive mod, which is being made by user FlyWillix. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is some pretty awesome high-tech engines for you to enjoy, which apparently are based off of Mobile Suit Gundam, but I really don't know much about that myself. I just know these engines are pretty awesome. So let's head into the vehicle assembly building and uh, grab ourselves a mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison sake and then into our mod filters just leaving on KFC and head to the engines category where all six of these lovely parts do reside and the first one we're gonna have a look at here is the 00R GN drive which is a very powerful engine though I really can't tell you what the thrust is on this because all of these engines work very differently and have a variable thrust system, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we get outside. But as for the stats, I can tell you, well, it does have a built-in generator producing a five electric charge per second and has a tank holding 6,000 GN particles, which is the fuel that these things use. And if we pop it onto our command pod there, you can see it's a pretty cool looking drive here and when you are in flight and uh, using the engine we got a really cool particle effect that comes out of this uh, blue band right here but you can tell it's a little bit smaller than the mark 1-2 command pod which is a little bit awkward size wise but all in all a very cool well-made and super powerful engine now the next one we'll have a look at here is the GN Condenser Drive, which is by far the least advanced and least impressive of all the drives, but still very powerful. And the only stat though I can really mention here is that this one will hold 20,000 GN particles. Now as for the look of this thing, if we pop it onto our command pod, you can see it's much smaller, fitting more in line with the, uh, you know, the 1.5 meter, or rather no, not 1.5, 1.25 meter fuselage category. And again, has the cool blue band with the neat particle effects in flight. And all in all, just a cool little engine. Now, the next part isn't an engine, but is in fact a uh, generator that creates those GN particles, and that is the GN Condenser Frame. And this one will produce 180 GN particles per second, provided, of course, it has... 200 electric charge per second so it's going to take a lot to get these particles power wise but once you do this uh frame will hold 10,000 of them and if we pop it on to our uh, command pod here it can be attached radially or uh, via an attachment point which you can see that it does have uh, there and uh has a very cool logo on it i i'm assuming that's something to do with mobile suit gundam but again i really don't know anything about that so uh uh, your guess is as good as mine, but a cool part nonetheless. Now, the next thing we have here is the GN Drive Tau, which holds 60,000 GN particles within it and is a bit more advanced than the Condenser Drive, uh, but still not quite as advanced as the just good old-fashioned GN Drive. And if we pop it on here, you can see that this one more or less fits in line with the 2.5 meter size of our command pod here and has a red ring rather than a blue one and, of course, a red particle effect to go with it but all in all a very cool part a lot more detailing on this one than the others which i very much do enjoy and the final of the engines that we have is just the good old-fashioned gn drive and this one is well similar to the 00r gn drive that we saw earlier but is smaller it will again produce though five electric charge per second and holds 6,000 gn particles and as you can see it fits more in line size wise with the gn condenser and it's just basically a smaller version of the 00r gn drive but overall very very fun, neat part. Now the final thing that we have here is not an engine, it is in fact the GN Sword. And yeah, it's a, it's an energy sword, which I, I'm assuming the 
mobile suit Gundams yield, or wield rather, wield is the correct word. Why did I say yield? I don't know. But there we go, if we pop it on here, it can be attached radially, but does also have an attachment point right there in the center. And sadly, we can't look at the particle blade on this here in the VAB, but we'll have a look at it out in the world. Yeah, it projects a very large blue energy blade, which is pretty awesome actually I really like that and if you do use some uh, servo robotics to make a robot you can give him a sword so yeah that is it for all of the individual parts on this thing a very cool a very a small number of parts but very very powerful engines and I do briefly want to mention one thing here with how powerful these are some might consider engines like this kind of cheaty and if you're playing in uh, Sandbox mode, eh, who cares, it's sandbox mode, have fun. But if you're playing in career, notice how much just the most basic GN condenser drive cost. A hundred thousand freaking funds. And that's the most basic of these drives. If you want the full-on GN drive, that's ten million. So the limiting factor for this in career mode is funds, as well as research. The GN drive is included in the research, and it's in the very far down the line uh, categories of the tech tree so it's very much an end game thing if you are in career but in sandbox eh, have fun enjoy yourself so let's take a look at three individual ships I made here because uh, the three main types of engines the condenser drive the Tau and the just regular GN drive all function slightly differently so let's load up a GN drive 3 first which is the Tau drive which is pretty nice there so let's go load to that and uh, show it off and talk a bit about this max overload that kept me from telling you about what the actual thrust of these things is. Now by default all these engines have their max overload set at one and basically this determines how much thrust you're going to get it's effectively a multiplier for the engine and the higher you put this thing the more GN particles it is gonna use but the oh boy much faster this thing is going to go and yeah for this one we can bring it down all the way to zero max overload which effectively renders the thing kind of useless or bring it all the way up to five which makes it so this thing can get anywhere in the solar system very quick but let's bring this baby back down to one and uh, we're actually gonna activate this engine but we're actually gonna activate one of the options here anti-gravity which if we turn on and undo the clamp we're hovering. Now with anti-gravity, we can sort of raise ourselves up and lower ourselves a bit, or at least slow the ascent with the throttle. But yeah, we're, we're freaking floating here. Now we can't hover on this one. The GN drive later, just the regular GN drive, very much can hover. This one though, it just very, very slowly goes up if you so desire. But if we activate the engine, we'll start going up a lot more quickly, and what the heck, we'll just deactivate the anti-gravity, and throttle up with the engine here. Oh, I apologize, we actually do need to keep the anti-gravity on. And with throttled up with the engine active, we start to go up very, very nicely. And uh, you can see here, we are accelerating at a pretty steady clip, already up to 100 meters per second, but if we increase the max overload, well, we're accelerating even more quickly, and look at that, we are over 400 oh boy yeah there it goes so the max overload it really really helps you go a lot faster a lot more quickly or of course more slowly if you do desire but let's uh revert this flight back to the vehicle assembly building and load up the second ship here uh, which we can talk about, which is the GN Drive 2, where we're going to be using the more basic, just condenser drive. And let's pop this thing out. Now, unlike with the last engine, this one does not have the anti-gravity. It is purely just an engine. So if we activate this engine and release the clamp, oh boy, we're going to have to throttle because this one on just its single max overload doesn't have a huge amount of power. We're throttled all the way up and with just one max overload, this is as fast as we're going to go. Now it's, it'll still get you where you need to go more quick or well, in a quick-ish manner. But if we increase our max overload, this time only to two, we can't go quite as fast as the Tau Drive 
you can see we are accelerating quite nicely. And uh, yeah, so it's not quite as good. That's why this is the most basic of the different GN Drive engines, but still a very effective one. Now let's uh, revert fly once again to the vehicle assembly building and go for the more proper full-on GN Drive. And I put four of the GN swords on it because they're hilariously awesome. And let's head out there. And now what we can do is, once we are on the launch pad, once again, we can activate the anti-gravity on this thing and release the clamps and we'll start to go up. Now we can activate hover and it'll actually start hovering here now, so long as the anti-gravity is active. Now if we deactivate anti-gravity, that hover mode goes away. Activate it again, activate hover, and we are in place, and that is a really cool feature to have that hover. Uh, but what's even more fun is we have the Trans Am mode. Now I don't know if that stands for something different in the Mobile Suit Gundam, but uh, deactivate hover and let's start going up at full acceleration here, and then activate the Trans Am mode. And uh, you'll see the ring goes from blue to this more purplish color, or well, more of a pink really, and we start accelerating at a very good rate, and that's before we load any max overload into this thing. So if uh, we increase it all the way to five, look at that acceleration. We are going uh, very, very fast, and uh, quite possibly too fast for this thing to go. I actually haven't brought it up to max uh, five overload yet, but we may make it out of the atmosphere before we burn up. Possibly, possibly. Oh boy, we're, we're losing integrity. Okay, I think we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we're fine. We've made it into space. <laughs> We've only been flying a few seconds and we are already into space. Let's actually bring it down to max one overload because, well, that thing was heating up quite a lot. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just a fun, very powerful, effective engine. But again, 10 million funds on this thing if you do want to use it in career. So this is definitely an engine you're going to want to keep in space to reuse. Now, uh, that's really it to talk about with the engine-wise, at least. We do, of course, have the condenser, which if we do start it up and activate it, it will start producing more GN particles using electric charge, and I've already used all 400 electric charge. <laughs> because, yes, this thing really eats up power. Again, it's 200 electric charge to get 180 GN particles. So even though, yeah, super powerful, kind of cheaty engines, the fuel, though, is going to take a lot of power. But, uh, yeah, oh, I actually didn't give you a really good close-up on that particle effect. There is the very cool blue particle effect coming out of this thing. I very much do enjoy it, but what's even more fun and entertaining is the energy blade. <laughs> there we go, I've got four energy blades on there producing, well, an energy blade, and that amuses me greatly. But yes, that is really it for this mod here today. Some very cool, very powerful engines that can get you all around the solar system really quick with even some having a hover mode, and then also energy swords. So if you'd like to have a look at this for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that's gonna be it for today. Hope you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!